Yellowstone supervolcano. Is Steamboat Geyser activity a sign of magma building up there? Well, we know that we have a mantle plume directly under Yellowstone coming from Baja, California. It goes through the eastern branch of it, goes through the uh, area of Utah, where we've had the recent 5.7 magnitude earthquake, and we still have earthquake swarms going on there. And then goes up all the way through to Yellowstone, and then turns west across the Snake River Plain and going on westward towards Idaho, where we've had the March 31st, April 1st, 6.5 magnitude earthquake, and still having star, uh, very large earth, well, large, meaning moderately, three and a half, four magnitude earthquakes in Idaho there, north of Boise, Idaho. So we have a tremendous amount of magma there. That same magma plume goes to the west towards the uh, area of San Andreas Fault and the Walker Lane Fault Systems, where we had just yesterday uh, very large, well, quite large. The earthquakes were quite large, and the latest one being 5.5 in Ridgecrest and uh, moderate earthquakes there as well. And we'll have another earth uh, up to look at that later on today. But what is going on here in uh, this steamboat geyser activity? The observers revealed the steamboat geyser is in a largely active period, separate to its local peers, leading scientists to question whether the magma is building beneath the surface of this massive supervolcano. We know Yellowstone is the second largest supervolcano on Earth. There's about 20 in total. And Yellowstone uh, has about 60% of the world's geysers. Now, the steamboat geyser, which is the world's largest, it's about 300 feet high when it erupts, has at points been spewing hot steam 300 feet into the air since 2018, but Steamboat runs at its own rhythm in the Norris Geyser Basin, unlike Old Faithful, which is in the upper and pork chop geysers, which are linked, and um, Old Faithful is in the upper geyser basin. Geysers like Old Faithful and Steamboat erupt whenever water and steam get trapped in a tight spot below the uh, geyser's blowhole. A mix of water and steam builds up in pressure until it finds its way to the surface where a tall steam of scorching hot water blasts hundreds of feet into the sky. But why Steamboat runs at its own pace in the Norris Geyser Basin is a bit of an enigma, and scientists are questioning whether it has an indication of a buildup of magma deep beneath the surface. Well, that's, it's not, well the, we know that the magma chamber is only about three to six miles below the surface. If you're standing over an area, for example, around uh, Old Faithful, where we, where we have a lot of uh, hotel and a lot of it's a tourist attraction. Three miles down, you have the roof of the magma chamber. Now, Yellowstone is packed with geological wonders such as geysers, hot springs, fumaroles, mud pots, geothermal pools. The activity beneath the surface leads to ground deformation, where the surface rises and falls accordingly. The Norris Geyser Basin has been underground deformation, undergoing deformation for 20 years, that's where Steamboat is. Yet Steamboat is the only geyser which seems to respond to the subsurface activity. Steamboat has erupted 79 times as of May 20th since late 2018, and accordingly, to, according to the study published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, solid earth corresponds with ground deformation. Charles Wicks of the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, said, Yellowstone's roots seem to extend all the way to the core mantle boundary. In that dimension, it's a magmatic system of continental scale. Mike Poland, the scientist in charge of USGS, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, said, why would just a single geyser respond to processes beneath Norris Geyser Basin? Wouldn't that impact all the geysers? So why is it seeming to uh, seemingly uh, 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 affecting only the uh, steamboat geyser? One explanation is that steamboat has a more complex, deeper system, which may be connected to the deepest chambers of Yellowstone. But the Yellowstone scientists state that more and continuous observations are needed to unravel this True mystery. Why is it it only affects Steamboat and not the others in that uh, Norris Geyser Basin? Mr. Wick said, with only two episodes of observed deformation near Norris, the eruption frequency appears to respond to the surface deformation. 
He says, of course, that's a very small size, so the apparent connection might be happenstance. Continuous monitoring of volatile flux rates are really needed, he says, to put the geophysical models in context. If surface inflation is caused by the accumulation of pressurized fluids and deflation occurs when those fluids escape to the surface, we might be able to detect changes in volatile flux over time. And now we know that Yellowstone supervolcano in uh, northwest Wyoming and De Montana and Idaho last erupted on a super eruption scale 640,000 years ago. According to USGS, the chances of a Yellowstone eruption is about 1 in 730,000 every year. With 640,000 years passed since the last major super eruption, Yellowstone is edging closer to exploding, but it could still be thousands of years away. It did have a lava eruption 70,000 years ago, and since then, another 80 eruptions. And this is on Express UK by Sean Martin. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.